Shout out to Shimon Kakadash. The one that the great built on that rule well. And shall walk to those in the highways and byways and the words sincerely and faithfully. Continually fighting the good fight of faith. Lord willing, you'll find that number to be delivered. But until then, we're going to keep fighting, man. Trying to make our calling and election sure and fight. Give them diligence. All right, so we're just going to go through it. Through the spirit. You know, because we got anything, articles. Y'all you know, you, know how we get down. Just going to keep running it, all right? So what we got? I got them. Go ahead. Second on. Yeah, hey, brothers. Yo, feel free to jump in, man. Y'all brothers, the scriptures. Just, you know, make it, make it uh, edifying. Second Edith chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou see a part of the sign that which I have told thee before, yep. then shalt thou understand that it is the verse in time when the highest began to visit the world which he made. That's exactly true, man. And the Lord is, is beginning to visit the world in which he made. Now, we, what do we see throughout the world? Earthquakes, thunders, yep. floods, all these things are happening right now. Who do you think that is, man? That ain't Mother Nature. That's the hand of Yahweh Bash Miao Shai, man. And he's coming down upon all the world in any in any in all facets, man. From, in all facets, man. From actual evidence, just what's happening in Los Angeles, man. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of city in Los Angeles that are mm -hmm. flooded right now. Up all up to uh, up to, to the door. And, and and even some people are dying in that flood. Yep. You know? Yep. It's happening all over Los Angeles, California, big floods happening, yep. man. Yep. Yep. Oh. Yeah, get the precept and we'll get the article. Uh, Isaiah 29, verse 6. Yeah. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts right. with thunder right. and with earthquake right. and great noise, with yep. storm and tempest yep. and the flame of the fire. fire. That's how the Lord's coming back, and that's how the Lord's actually coming here right now. Get what I'm gonna get the article. Give me my two and ten, brother. But but that's how the Lord is coming right now. The Lord's the Lord is going to destroy this place, man. Right. This place is out of here. There's no way you can run for shelter or, or run to get better ground or get a better piece of pasta somewhere. All of this is going to be destroyed. You see? And the Lord is, is showing you what he's about to do. People are, right now, people are homeless. A tornado went through some community out in the Midwest. You got the Edomites crying, I can't believe it, we lost everything. What are we going to do? You goddamn right. That's what the Lord is doing, man. He's bringing anguish upon the world. Death, destruction, floods, thunder, earthquakes, famine, all these things are coming, man. Just because it doesn't hit you in your city, that don't mean it's not coming to you, man. It's going to get to you one way or another. All right, go ahead with your article. Give me my two and ten. Michael two and ten. Right. It says, Arise, ye, and depart, for this is not your rest. Right, this is in your home, man. This is a place where we were brought over to serve slavery and to build up the walls of the Edomite nation, man. This ain't your rest. The Lord's going to destroy you, man. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Don't get comfortable over here. And if you think you're going to get comfortable in these last days, as these things are starting to tick up and speed up, you're seeing shit go down more and more throughout the four corners of the earth, man. There's no need to get comfortable over here, baby, because this bitch is about to be destroyed and burnt up with fire. Go ahead. Because it is polluted. you damn right it's polluted. Everything that we have to endure on a weekly basis, man, the shit that we got to look at, the shit that we got to see, the shit we got to listen to, all these goddamn so-called, you know, leaders of this country, you know, uh, putting all kinds of unrighteous laws on the books, all types of vile shit that goes down. This place will destroy you, man, just by its philosophies alone, let alone what these devils are going to do when the Lord gives them the green light. The philosophy alone will destroy you, man. Get you, you, I mean, you gotta send your kids to school, but now they're teaching trans, transgenderism. Mm -hmm. yep. What do you think that's gonna do to the mind of a little child, man? That's gonna destroy that child. Especially a little boy, man. A little boy sh shouldn't be listening to no shit like that. Yep. Right. But this is the unrighteous decrees they put in place, man. Uh, America's the most wickedest country on, on, on the planet, man. There's no doubt about it. That's right. This place is full of wickedness. Yeah. It is evil. And it will destroy you. Go ahead. It shall destroy you even with its short destruction. That's why the Lord's going to come back and destroy this place, man. The Lord said if, it, if, if he didn't come back and show the days, there will be no flesh left to be saved, man. Who is he talking about? What flesh is he talking about? He ain't talking about the whole world. He's talking about the nation of Israel. Because that's who the plot is against, man. The plot is against the children of Israel. At the end of the day, all these nations, they play a part in the big movie. But at the end of the day, the nation of Israel are the ones who are going to be the victims, man. Are going to be the murdered. Are going to be the slaughtered. Quick, like, Go ahead, bro, with your audience. Real quick, down to California is like one of the main hubs for witchcraft. That's right. That's right. Hollywood. 
That's one of the that, that, that shit. As far as I'm concerned, it is the it is the hub of fucking witchcraft, man. That shit you you get the, you get your movies from Hollywood, you get all your your, your TV shows from Hollywood. Music. People always want to go to Hollywood to do what? To be inducted and to be invoked into that demonic spirit, man. We think all these rappers do. They go right to Hollywood, man. Rappers and musicians, all of them, they go right to Hollywood. Yeah, they can they can put that fucking spell over. You got it, you got it. Yeah, you know, yeah, good, bro. I was gonna say that Hollywood, uh, uh, the magician's wand is made out of Hollywood. Hollywood, that's right, that's right. You see? So it ain't no, it, listen man, this ain't no goddamn surprising thing. This shit has been in place for a long goddamn time. It's just that nobody talks about it. Until the, until the men of the Lord from the head of parts on down and, and many various brothers throughout the world now have been bringing all these things up. As the scripture says, how are the things that Esau searched out, man? How is this hidden thing sought up? You know, listen, if the, if the men of the Lord were on the highways and byways, half the shit you people hear these days, you don't know nothing about it, man. The Lord put us in place to give you this information, man. I just said, you got this. So on npr.com.org, it says, California storms bring more heavy rain, flooding and power outage. Yep. It says, rounds of heavy rain, wind, and snow are battering California once again, yep. prompting flood alerts and power outages in several regions. Now, I don't know how true this is, but every now and then you'll come across a map that Esau projects that, that, that what the country's going to look like. And they have New York all flooded out, they got California all flooded out. So what basically, Right, so basically you gotta you gotta flee to the interiors of America, but then again that wouldn't that wouldn't give that wouldn't give a a, a, a great destruction that much joy, man. You gonna see the, the Lake of Fire ain't just gonna be fucking North Dakota, South Dakota, and I, the Lake of Fire is gonna be this whole shit burning, man. That's right. That this whole shit's gonna be burnt up, man. You think everybody's gonna everybody they're gonna be some waters floods or some dams breaking each each end of the continent? It's gonna just submerge on the water. Everybody gonna flee to the middle of the country? That don't make no goddamn sense, man. That's why the scriptures say if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. We understand Esau puts a lot of misinformation out there, man, to keep these people lost in, in the dark, man. Go ahead. Also, to add on too, yeah. even predicting a, a 10.0 you know, earthquake, earthquake. Right. Right. Well, 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 whatever the case they do, whether it be the harp program, whatever it may be, man, may the Lord, may the Lord put his, his hand upon it to make it that much more fierce, man. That's what we're talking about. Because any destruction that goes on in this country, we praise y'all watch me all shine. Any kind of any kind of ill calamity that comes upon the people, we praise the Lord, man. Because at the end of the day, the Lord said, What? All this is his, man. All this belongs to the Heavenly Father. So this place of America is going to be destroyed real soon. Go ahead. So the storms are expected to continue at least throughout the weekend. The National Weather Service said President Joe Biden has declared the storm, storms a major disaster and ordered federal aid to supplement uh, local recovery efforts in affected areas. You know what's going to happen too, though? It's not going to be just the, the, the people being underwater. There's going to be a lack of food, man. It's going to be a lack of food. But not only that, there's going to be a lot of diseases from these floodwaters that are going to be sitting. These stagnant waters are going to be sitting. So it's all it's all about the it's all about to start taking place, man. Go ahead. Other matter, if I may add, a lot of the things that come into this country first go to Cali, and then the truckers bring it over here. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to Yeah, you know, and it's going to be it's going to be a, a, a it's going to be a halt in all these shipping because once they once they institute this new pandemic or whatever is going to go on. They're gonna put a halt on all got goods coming in and goods going out. They're gonna put a halt to all that shit, man. And that's gonna drive the food right up to the fucking through the roof. Because there's not gonna be any importing coming into America. So therefore, <clears throat> you're gonna have to settle for what you got. Now, now the food is gonna become that much more expensive because there's only gonna be so much there's gonna be so little of it. You see? And now you ain't gonna be able to go in and grab this, that, and the third because they're gonna put a they're gonna put a, a, a lockdown on it. They're gonna put a certain amount of food items you can grab when you go to the store. Put it, who knows how they're going to do it, man? But we know the Lord's behind all of it. Bottom line, the Lord's behind everything that's going to happen in this place. Go ahead. Finish off. We jump down. It says, uh, since last month, a series of at atmospheric rivers has pummeled the state. Since then, at least 19 people have died in storm-related incidents, yep. and a five-year-old, a five-year-old who was swept away by floodwaters in San Luis uh, Obispo County remains missing. The governor said the recent weather events have resulted in more deaths than the state's last two years of wildfire. This is more than 19,000 customers were without electricity on Sunday afternoon. According to PowerOutage.us, a number that had declined since Saturday, Saturday evening, 
He says, the state will continue to seek periodic rain into Wednesday with two to four inches expected to drop along the Sierra Nevada yeah. mountain range or point to the weather prediction center. As the scripture says, the Lord's going to visit the world in which he made. Sure. Now, I know, I remember a while, uh, not too long ago, we had a, a heavy rainstorm and we lost power. I wasn't really concerned, but at the end of the day, as as two hours became three, three hours became four, and we got their power. I just start, I just start to, you know, kind of got shit in the fridge, that can move bag, you know? And that was just on four or five hours, man. Can you imagine four or five days, 10 days, 12 days, 15 days of no power? Let me tell you something, man. It, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like the Thunderdome out here. Every man for himself. If you got it and, and somebody else needs it, they're gonna try to pay you a visit, man. I got you. But this is the time we're coming into. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Did you read about, can somebody, can somebody read about Jeremiah 37? Uh, Second Ezra, uh, Ezra 16, 17. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Yep. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, right. but he shall be saved out of it. So when all of these things start happening, these things that the elder is talking about, uh, your, your resolve is going to be tested. And that's what all of this is, is talking about, because these are going to be times that uh, are extremely uh, difficult to live through, right? What does the scripture say? Uh, since uh, ever there was a nation, yeah, 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 yeah. right. So you, when you think back at all the different horrible things that have happened from nation to nation, kingdom to kingdom, happenstance to happenstance, and you think about him, you know, the thing that's coming is worse than those things. It, it, it's 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 a it's a lot to bear. But your resolve is going to be tested. What is it? Uh, somebody also get a uh, uh, Revelation two and ten. Let's go to uh, Second Ezra. Revelation two and ten. Second Ezra sixteen. Yep. Second Ezra sixteen, verse seventy. Yep. And it reads, "For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, yep. but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods." And cast them out of their houses, yep. then shall they be known who are my right. chosen. Then, then, they, then shall they be known who are my chosen. Mm -hmm. So your resolve is going to be tested. Come, somebody look up that word resolve. Resolve? So, yeah, there's going to be a couple different uh, definitions. But, uh, for one in particular. Got it? Resolve to settle or find a solution to a problem to dispute. Or contention, uh, uh, contentious matter. Because I'm sending a second definition of resource. I'm sending it to you. This is this is this is what I want. All right. The uh, last one down there. You can read all of them. Okay. Uh, two. Uh, I read this uh, point. You know, a firm determination to do something. Yeah, a firm determination to do something, right? So you, you set out for a task, right? Which is to, to push the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah into the end code, right? So now, all these things that are going to happen are going to test whether or not you're firm of it, whether or not you're really going to follow through with the things you said. Because when it's when nothing's going on, it's, it's, it's easy to continue to come out here on the highways and byways. Uh, the, the proof of that is when you read about the Apostle uh, Peter, who when he was 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 tested to say hey ain't you uh, one of them guys that was with him what did he do he said no no i i know not the man you know so your resolve in this time is going to be tested it's similar similar to how those seven uh maccabean brothers that we read about in uh second Ezra, i mean i'm sorry second maccabees the seventh chapter that their resolve was being tested right and even to to death you're going to have to make a commitment to this thing we 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 forget that sometimes because you know we just we're doing this because we believe in it, right? But what happens when you know all hell has broken loose and now your 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 bodily you you can, you can possibly have harm to the body. You can be killed. You can be beaten up, right? What are you gonna do when those things come? When, when your thirty year life is is on the table, right? Real quick, and I back up. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter four verse twenty eight. Yeah. Strive for the truth unto death, yes, sir. and the Lord shall fight right, for thee. Right. Strive for the truth unto death. And I've always had this, uh, I guess, I guess mantra for lack of a better word, where I say, if if as long as as long as I'm not on a chariot, 
or dead, I'm gonna continue to teach this word, man. I'm gonna continue to teach this word. Lord, you know, Lord willing, of course. What you got? Yeah, yep, yep. Revelation chapter two, verse ten. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Yep. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, yep. that ye may be tried. Yep. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown be of thou, life. Be thou faithful unto death, and he will give the crown of life. Right? So your your resolve is going to be tested. That's what these things, the time of Jacob's trouble is to test your resolve. What is uh, the scriptures talk about? The, uh, the hour of temptation? Is that in the Revelation? Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so, so, whoever, whoever can find it. I can't remember. Exactly. Three three and Revelation three chapter, three yeah, three chapter 3 verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, yep. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, right. which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Right, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now the men of the Lord, right? They, we already know that that, uh, that by what the scriptures say, the men of the Lord are going to be saved, and they're going to they're going to teach this thing to the end. And we can only hope that we are those men. You know? That when that when our resolve is tested, right? That when we're challenged for what it is we believe, that we take the challenge head on. You know? yeah. Now it's going to be giving an account of you know of Peter and how he escaped from prison for the power of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is um after the twelve. I'm going to start the first the first verse. Yeah. He says, now about that time, Herod the king shot forth his hand. To vex certain of the church, yep. he killed James, the brother of, the, of John, yep. with the sword. Right. So the apostles started getting clipped, man. As as time wore on, they all started to get clipped. I mean, all, not the scriptures don't give the account of all of them uh, and how they died, but you can go into historical accounts and they'll tell you how some of the apostles died, and they started to get clipped one by one. Um, uh, another another example. Somebody go to uh, Acts. No. Seven. Oh, Stephen? Yeah, Stephen, yeah, Stephen, Stephen, yeah. Stephen was, you know, being challenged. Keep going. He says, um, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Right. Wow, then were the days of the eleven bread. Yep. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison yep. and, they, and delivered him to four quartians right. of soldiers. Quaternions, right? So that's what's that, 12? Four quaternions? Yeah. Is that 12? Am I right? Or 16? He remembers, but anyway, he delivered him. He delivered him, right? So the point, the point is this: by the time, by the time they really got deep into their ministry, right? Okay, you got to think about this. So they, they were disciples under the Lord Yahweh Shai. The Lord Yahweh Shai then dies for this thing. So now that's your first challenge. It's like, oh shit, you know, he, you know, he always said that, but even Peter was like, nah, you ain't, you ain't never going nowhere. You, you're gonna be right here with us forever. And that was Peter's sentiment, right? But then when the Lord died, you got to think, like, all right, damn, the man that was teaching us and said that these things were going to happen, now is being taken and it's about to happen. So that's your first challenge. But then they kept going. They kept teaching. And they, you know, woke up hundreds of thousands of people throughout the known world, right? And in that, as they wore on and they got deeper into that ministry, they started getting challenged, like getting thrown in jail. Some of them were being stoned, right? You got something? Yeah, give it to me. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, uh, first I'll start at twenty. Uh -huh. uh, for ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, mm -hmm. if a man devour you, mm -hmm. if a man take you, mm -hmm. if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Mm -hmm. I speak as concerning the approach, as though we had been weak. How mm -hmm. about were in so in his bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. No, I want to go there. Are the Hebrews, so am I. Are the Israelites, so am I. Are they the seed of Abraham, so am I. Are they ministers of Yahweh Shai? I speak as a fool. I more in labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times I received forty stripes, save once. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, right. and night and in the day I have been in the right. deep. So one, so one would think about how many different uh, troubles that he had gone through for this truth, right? But when I think of that, I think of this, that he went through each one, and then after, kept doing what he was doing. Then went through another one, and then kept doing what he was doing. And that's why there were, there were so many different things that happened to him, because he continued on. That's, that's, that's resolved. He was committed to pushing the word, right? He made a commitment. He made a decision to say, 
I'm going to teach this word until death or until I'm saved out of this thing, one or the other, right? There was even, there's even accounts of men taking an oath not to eat until they killed Paul, you know? So Paul, Paul is, a, is, a, is a consummate example of, of his resolve being tested and, and continuing on past, you know? He said he would wish he would have passed over mm -hmm. to be with Yahweh Shah, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So it would be from there for him to be here to teach, this, teach that word, mm -hmm. you see? So that goes to show you his resolve was was deep embedded in him, man. Yeah. Now, I, 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 so I, I want to give a testimony. I'm, I'm embarrassed about it. I'm not proud of this, but I'll, I'll give the testimony to you guys. Um, when we first, no, it's okay. When we first, when we first, whatever, so, so be it. When we, first, when we first got out on highways and byways, we was arguing with this, these two guys about uh, the virgin, uh, the virgins in Revelation. I said that these are the, those that not know women. Um, so we was, we was getting into it. And I had got tired of arguing with the dude, so I sat my ass down on the on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I got tired of talking to him, mm -hmm. and it didn't it didn't please the elder very much, right? Mm -hmm. And he called me afterwards, and he said this. He said, uh, he said you don't have any discipline, and I didn't know what he meant at the time. But what he meant was you never really went through anything where you had to stand through it and really really face the wind mm -hmm. as it's as it's beating in your face. And he was right, right? So there was there was no resolve there because it was it was new. It was uh, you were it, we were used. And the truth, and I had never gone through any real turbulent times in my life. I was a, I was a kid, basically, right? And so th this is what the scriptures are talking about: your your resolve being tested. When we read all these scriptures, your resolve is being tested. How 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 fastened? The scriptures talk about that too, right? Being fastened in this thing. Yeah. So how how fastened are you? How deeply fastened are you into this thing? When the wind comes, are you going to be blown over? Or are you going to stand because you had a, a, a strong, powerful foundation that was built on a stone? You know? hey, uh, I got to say, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I just got a piece of it. Yeah. Uh, this is um, Luke 14 and 28. Yep. For which of you, intending to build a tower, said it's not down first and count the cost, it. whether he has sufficient to finish it, it. less happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, right. all that behold it begin to mock him, right. saying this man began to build and right. was not able right. to finish it. And, and they'll gladly do it. Mm -hmm. Especially your, your family, those who know you was into this. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you talked all that shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. the white man ain't dead. Hey man, ain't that old? Oh, oh, you calling your family wicked because we eat ham, man. Oh, you know, you talked all that shit, and now you just like me, man. They'll be happy to talk that shit, man. You know, they will be glad, right? So you you have to have, like I, I keep saying, that's a good word to use. You have to have resolve, man. You gotta you gotta stand on the things that you said you were gonna do. Count the cause, because the end could very well be that you die. That could be the end of this thing, you know. You got, you got something you want to say? Oh, yeah, but I say, that's why um the mind the mindset of faith. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of people, they actually think that this is it. This is the end all, be all. Mm. So, like, if you have that mindset, you will succumb to whatever you saw and put in front of you. Because mm. that's why the scripture talks about how, you know, death is rest and entering into the new covenant. The, you know, you see what's going on today. But anyways, um, just having a mindset of faith, you know, I, I talk to people all the time and, I think y'all even said before that you was arguing with a dude over here that's talking about, I got to get my money, I got to do this, I got to do that. So it's just like really just the mindset. It's not just like coming out here and preaching. It's like, do you really believe it? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we about to lose it all. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. There's always in the scriptures, to just say everything was written for our learning. And um, I think back, I don't think there has really been not one servant of Yahweh that hasn't really been tested. You know, every single servant has been tested. Uh, uh, Shadrach, uh, 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 Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, you had Daniel. You had every single. That, that's just uh, uh, David, right? That's just a uh, uh, one of uh, what do you call it? Re the prerequisites. Yeah, that, that is that, that is the requisite. Prerequisites. The, the, proof, the proof of that is mm -hmm. the, our forefather, our foremost father, mm -hmm. who. Uh, Received the the oh, first promise, right. yeah, yeah. Abraham, right. Abraham. His resolve sacrifice. was tested. Sacrifices. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jacob had the rest of the angels. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. That's that's right. right. That's right. The heavenly Father always requires sacrifice, and your sacrifice is your result, man. What's that? Uh, you know? Was that First Corinthians? Right. Right. In the twelve and one, make your bodies a living sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Romans twelve. Romans is Romans twelve. Yeah. 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 Uh, first Peter four verse one. Yeah. For as much then as Yahushua has suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourself like wise, right. the same mind. Right, right. 
My, he, he, made, he mentioned that word mindset. It's a good word because your 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 mindset dictates everything. If you go if you go in with the proper mindset, you can do anything. Really. You can you can finish any project that you start. You can finish any task that you set out to do. It's all about the mindset. If you if you set your mind to do it, you'll do it, man. And you'll and it'll be like a cakewalk to you. Keep on. It says, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, mm -hmm. for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, yes, that he no longer should live the rest of his life yep. in the flesh to the loss of men, yep. but to the world of most high. Yeah, some, some, some people forget about that part of it, that, that self-sacrifice, making yourself, uh, or putting yourself really on a, on that, that sacrificial podium, you know? People, for, people forget about that part of it. Everybody thinks about the glory, right? But they don't think about the trek to the glory, yeah. right? They only think about the, the end where you're being glorified. But the scriptures tell you that before glory, you must be a base. Say, take no thought for your life. That's it. It's not about you. Let me get this second. There's two and 15. Yep. Mothers, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Yep. Make their feet fast as pillars. Yeah, make their feet fast as pillars, right? And not fast as in you're running fast, but fast as pillars, right? Because what do you do with a pillar? You you bury it, you bury it into the ground. And that's the thing that helps the building to stand. Right, but but it also goes with the mindset. Mm -hmm. Your mindset gotta be right in order for your feet to stand firm. Yep. If, you ain't, if your mind ain't right, then you ain't gonna stand firm. Right. Right. So going back with the elder saying, it's about that mindset like we're gonna mention. I gotta read this one real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalm chapter 92, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in yeah. Lebanon. Some, somebody gave the analogy years ago. I can't remember who it is, but I'm going to steal this anyway. When you see a palm tree, right, and it's blowing in the wind, what does it do? It spins back and forth, right? And the reason why that happens and it doesn't break is because it's fashioned well. It's built, it's built for the storm. That's why you see it in tropical places, yep. tropical islands. Yep. Uh, it starts off with a seed, a seed that's buried in the nourish in the ground, but that's that's our faith. Our faith is it starts off at the ground. That's why it says um they should make their feet uh, fast as pillars. But our foundation is Yahweh Shai. So if our, if we have faith in Yahweh Shai and we water that, our our our, our, our seeds won't go on a uh, stony or on a brook so it'll it'll have some service. It's, 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 it's a book, but it starts with your mind first. That's yeah, quick research. Yeah, so go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah, but probably bring this out real quick. Ecclesiastes two and ten. It says, Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Yep. And whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, and saveth in time of affliction. Then it says, Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goes two ways. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. Right. Woe unto you right. that well, are lost faith. It says, says uh, woe unto you that are faint-hearted. Right? Is there, there are there are a lot of people that are faint-hearted. You gotta, um, you got, there's, there are certain people who are upset about the rape doctrine still. Where, where you, where you, where, where, where that's a part of, that was a part of our law. That was written into the law. It was something that is a, a part of our culture, right? Not, not rape itself, but how the, how it's going to be dealt with, which means it's a, it's a part of life. Any, anything that was, there was a law made around, that means it was a part of the happenings that went on. So you had to have a law on how to deal with it, right? Let me say this too. Even when you come into some, some type of, uh, some type of calamity or some type of some uncertain times, Men are gonna be men, right? Men are gonna go back to that nature. You know? You know people talk all kinds of shit, oh they break the this let society break down. Let society break down. The yep. majority of you men out there are gonna go right back to man, a uh, uh, man frame of mind. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get what's mine. I'm gonna take what I want. Alright? Men gonna be sitting there talking about, oh yeah, this no. Alright? And hold on a second, no, I gotta. Yeah, so that's 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 just what a society is, man. When society breaks down, yep. it, it becomes lawless. And the law of society brings on all types of mentalities, man. You ain't gonna have a fucking a society breaking down, you're gonna be living a life, a law abiding life. Hell no. You're gonna go steal, kill, rape, rob, murder. That's what happens, man. 
Oh, Elder, 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 if I could just finish this because the yeah, brother yeah, brought out, still up, he brought out the Revelation 3 where it says, Because thou hast kept my patience. Yep. It says right here, Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit right. you? All these things that we're talking about patience, yep. long suffering, right? Mm -hmm. they, those, all those things tap into the man, a man's level of resiliency, right? And what he's willing to endure for his truth, right? So there's there's going to be a choice to be made. Right, it's easy. Right now, it's it's easy. It's, it's yeah. as uh, as demanding as being on the highways and byways can be. As demanding as teaching the word and teaching men uh, the scriptures. Right, this is the easy part. Because really, there's no challenge on, on our lives. Right, our houses are not in danger. Our families are not in danger yet. Right, but when those things happen, what are you going to do? Romans 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of Yahweh that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto the most high which is a reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be transformed by the renewing of your mind right there is that word mind again right so that mind is important how strong it is is important. You know? uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect the will of the most high. Yeah. Prove it, prove it to yourself first. Yeah. Prove That's it right. to you. You gotta believe this thing. The scriptures say that all men uh, be persuaded in their own mind, right? Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Yep. You know? So you gotta prove it to you, to you first, right? Then you can worry about whether or not you prove it to someone else, yeah. right? Do you believe this thing? Because you, you, if you will be put on the spot, if you will. There ain't no, yeah, yeah, I, I got faith, I got faith. Oh yeah? The Lord, the Lord, man, you know, okay, you got, you got faith, huh? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see, go ahead, bro. Elder, man, I can give a testimony. I was with this brother um, on the lawn, uh -huh. and it was after camp, I was running my gums, my license was suspended. So I'm like, yeah, I got faith in the Lord. Everything's going to be all right. Within five minutes, pull up, drop them off. Gang unit, pull up, uh -huh. back up, throw them lights on. I didn't even know, see, I was in a handicap. They pulled that all up, put me out, man. I'm sitting there shaking. <laughs> I asked him if I could get my jacket. One dude's being cool, but the whole point is I, I was telling that brother to the script. I was running my mouth, and the Lord was like, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to test him. I was running my mouth. Yeah, that's how it's going, Speak of and wish for, man. That's it. That's it. The Lord will give you just what you desire. Exactly. You know? Let me get this. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, it was already read, but let me read it again. First Peter 4 and 1. Yep. It was read already? Yep. But it's all right. Yeah. For so much then as Yahweh Shai has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That's it. So he, he suffered in his flesh, right? The scriptures say that the servant is not greater than his master. So we're going to have to suffer in the flesh too. Now, it is not required of us to die, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to have to. Right. Right. It was a requirement for him because the nation of Israel had to be saved by that death. For, so for us, it's not a requirement, but that doesn't mean it won't happen or that it can't happen. Yeah. That, you know, that it's not a possibility. Mm -hmm. Right. So think about that. Man. Think about that. Are you willing to die for the chance of salvation, for the, for the hope that the Lord will deliver you? From, from any kind of situation you're in. So again, when you, when you read the book of Acts, all the way through from beginning to end, that's what that was about. Their resolve was being tested. They went through the discipleship, right, where they were being disciplined on how to be men of the Lord, but then they were sent out. And then in that being sent out, the Lord had to test them and say, to see if all that he taught them was now going to stand. If they were fascinated in this thing. And they went through all kinds of trouble, man. All kinds of trouble. Riots, right? Imagine that you you in the middle, and you talking, you freaking, and just we, I mean, not, not in it. a modest way, we've experienced it, man. Where we've seen groups of people come up and, and, and surround us. Yes, yeah, your face is hot. You you wondering what, what's going to happen? You don't know what's you know. It's, it's, it's intense, man. Got to bro, yo, watch that side over there. Watch, you know, watch yeah, this because yeah. the, the mob of people that was gathering around, man. Yeah. It's, 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 it's down like that. And that's why a lot of people are afraid to come out on the highways and byways 
you'll see certain videos and see what goes on sometimes. You don't, you don't know what's going to go on. Really? It's uncertain, man. That's why you got to make yourself, you know, make your body a living sacrifice. Yep. You know, I remember it was a brother in Trinidad that got, you know, oh, got yeah. killed up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you ever think in a million years he's going to go out and, you know, the Lord's going to take his life that day? Yep. But that was all set for a reason, though. Yep. You know, he was, he was a martyr. Died in the hour shot, man. Yeah, we've been, we've been, we've been yeah, Y'all gonna be here at six o'clock. Right, 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 right. I'm gonna go get the piece and come mm -hmm. back. And, you know, there's all, all kinds of things, man. But yep. you gotta be willing to endure those kinds of things. You know, and don't go out looking for trouble. Right. But you don't, don't go out there trying to create a scenario, right? Because right? right. the Lord is gonna do it Himself. Right, right, right. The Lord is gonna test you Himself. He doesn't need you to go out there causing any trouble because we still want the name of the Yahweh Shad to be blameless, right? So you don't go out causing trouble, uh, ruffling feathers, if you will, right? Uh, putting, adding fuel to the fire, as they say. Because uh, the, this thing that we do is troubling enough. It's troubling enough. It's enough to make people want to kill you. Just telling the truth is enough to make somebody want to kill you. Right? So what's going to happen? You're going to be tested. Go ahead, we're um, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Yeah. He hath put him to grief. Yeah. When thou shalt make his stolen offering for sin, yeah. he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper right. in his So hand. just like it pleased the Lord to bruise the Lord Yahweh Shai, yeah. it's going to please him to bruise us as well, man. That was, that was how he, you know, kind of got uh, his, 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 badge of, his badge of honor, if you will, right? Going through that pain that he had to endure, had to suffer for us. For him. Well, say, that's how you see how just from like that right there, the Lord don't look at death the way that we look at death. You know what I'm saying? So like that's what I'm saying. Like with the mindset, if you really believe reincarnation that you're gonna be risen again, you're gonna get that crown on your head. It shouldn't be nothing, but like it's easier said than done. Oh, it's, it's always easier said. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be nothing. But that's, the, but that's the point, really, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? It's easier said than done yep. because. Right now, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. All we're doing is saying. Yep. When it when it comes time for us to do, are we gonna be able to do it? That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, Psalm uh, 16, verse 15. Yep. Precious the sight of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai is the death of his sins. That's it. That's it. Man. You know what I'm saying? This too, though. Mm -hmm. We're not afraid of death over here. Yep. A lot of people are afraid to die. A lot of people are afraid to die on this side because we've got riches and all, all types of you know. Material, we're not afraid to die. Likewise, what Paul said, he would rather have passed away and been with Yahweh Shai. You know, once you cross over, man, you're free from pain, you're free from the wicked, where the wicked cease from you know being wicked on you. You know? So this thing, this thing, it's a double win for us no matter what goes down, man. Yep. If we get taken on this side, we're going to be with Yahweh Shai. If we if we remain on this side, to preach the word, go through the trials and tribulations, the time of Jacob's trouble. Get redeemed and delivered up to see the destruction of America, man. So it's a win win for us. Good, bro. Going to the comment board, GMS Spiritual Arc 144K, 1 Peter 4 and 13. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad, glad also with exceeding joy. Right, but we're standing firm on the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And when, all, when the Lord comes back and he's going to be handing out those crowns, we're going to be more than delighted, man. Right. You know, as we said, who are these? That have, these are those who still so stiffly in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Right. So we're going to stand strong until the Lord comes and gets us, man. And when he comes and gets us, everybody's going to see it. Everybody's going to see the, 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 the hopeful elect that's going to be getting, receiving those crowns and that, that multitude of people cheering and screaming and hollering. Yep. These are those who stood so stiffly oh, for nice. the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Go ahead, read it. So, Wisdom of Simon, chapter 5, um, verse, well, verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness for the fix of such as have afflicted him. And isn't that what we're doing? We do it on a, daily, a weekly basis, man, daily basis. Whenever you put a video up, you're standing bold before the face of those that afflict you. Because you're putting, you're hitting send or upload. That video goes to the four corners of the earth. So you're standing strong and standing firm on what you believe in, man. You ain't cowering down. A lot of men cowered down. A lot of men left the faith because they didn't want to have to deal with their boss or their woman was fucking barking in their ear, so on and so forth. It's going to be more than that, man. What the Lord has in store for us is we can't even compare to any of this bullshit that's here on this planet, man. Go ahead. And men don't come for his labor. Mm -hmm. 
when they see when they see it, they should be terrible, they should be troubled, terrible fear. They should be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit, Joseph and himself, this was he when we had some type of division. You know, if people walk by, they see us up in this little gazebo here, and they're looking at us like, you know, these guys got no job. They're up there talking about God, what they're swearing, and all this other stuff. They, they look at us like we're, we're, we're bottom of the barrel, man. Yep. You know, how did, and, and, and just every everyday average people. Yep. You holding the Bible and you say the word shit, they're like, oh my God, he's not a man of God. Right. He's not, yeah, he's not a man of God. The man of God, but you watch your language, you're using profanity. And then you got to get into the whole definition of words and what words mean. But we don't give a damn, man. You know, we try to curb it, you know, because, you know, we just got to keep, keep it, you know, just keep it on the level. But the mass of the people, you ain't going to be able to, they're going to understand you, man. They're not going to understand your position. Go ahead. He says, there should be a man's understanding of the strangeness of stuff. What's that? He said, and um, if this was he when we had some time of the religion, in the form of reproach, mm -hmm. we throw our country's life madness. They have, they continually do that, man. They count our life as madness. Look at these guys, they're, 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 they're uneducated, right? They're, yeah, don't worry, don't, there's a bunch of uneducated guys up here, that's all. You know, we're uneducated, they proceed, we proceed to be uneducated, you know? They just, you know, just coming out here, just yelling and screaming at the top of our lungs. But we are the servants of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. We are, we are those who are going, Lord willing, to take part of the rulership of the whole world, man. So get familiar with the faces, baby. That's right. He said, um, and then we can, and, um, he says, we fool a this like madness, and, and, and his end to be with our honor. How is he numbered among the children of Yahweh, and his law is among the same? Right. Then how is he numbered? Because the Spirit of the Lord have ordained us to be out here and push the word on the highways and byways. You know, we've sacrificed great things in, our, in this lifetime, man. You know, you know how pleasant it is for, for those who are outside in the world? They get the haircut, they get the car wash, they go into the clubs, they're doing all these worldly things because it, it feels good, it, it tastes good. You know, we refrain from a lot of that, man. You know, we don't say brothers don't get together and go out for a treat and grab a bite to eat or whatever. But on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, that's what put the majority of the men of the world do, man. But we being servants of the Lord, you know, we have a job to do. We have a duty to uphold. And anybody that comes by and walks by and sees us out here, their first thought is, oh, these guys, you know, what kind of group is this? Some kind of uh, militant, black militant group? Oh, oh, it's the black Hebrew Israelites. You know, anything to, to downplay or to try to deter or, or try to de defame the men of the Lord, man. Anything. And this is why we come out and we stand so bold in the face of those who are afflicted. We don't give a damn, man. Family, friends, anybody. We're going to come out and do this work, man. Go ahead. This is uh, 1 Peter 4 and 4. It says, Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them right. to the same excess of pride right. speaking evil right. of you. Right. Now, now, that goes to when a brother comes into the truth, you leave the world, you leave all that shit behind, and all of a sudden, you, you know, when the dude used to run with in the world, oh, God, what's called? We're going to go do this. You're like, nah, bro, we're done, done, done with that shit. They're going to think it's strange that you don't go. Look, you've been running with us for 15 years. Yep. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to turn because you're holding the Bible, and then all of a sudden, you become a pussy at that point. Nigga, I nigga, nigga, pussy. Because in, soci in today's society, <laughs> if you're walking around with a Bible, you got to be a punk ass. Yeah. If you're walking with a Bible in society today, man, like we always say, man, you got lions up here, man. You know, Lord willing, don't come down to that. But if it comes down to that, somebody gonna get their asses handed to them, man. When we out here to with work to do, we got we gotta push the word of God, watch me out shot. And may the Lord protect us and guide us as we go through these things and, and push this word. That it doesn't come to fifth of cups. That we don't have to stomp somebody out when they're getting crazy. And they get crazy, man. We had one one demon. That was up there. She came out the subway. She came out. She had some hot, whatever one splash. You know, for no, no, I don't want to say for no reason, but because we're the men of the Lord. Oh, and this is what happens to the men of the Lord. T-shirt man said here. T-shirt man, go ahead, brother. This is Matthew 16, starting at verse 24. Then said Yahweh shot unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Right, because you really, who are you, man? 
Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. You think there's somebody in this world? You think there's somebody? The Lord will take everything from you, man, in a heartbeat. Look at that dude who played for the Bulls, the uh, the, uh, the Bills. He was a, 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 a defensive back or whatever, running around making tackles. Had his name in the paper. He'll never play football ever again, man. Ain't nobody, yeah, ain't nobody gonna whisk their whisk their doll on a nigga with a heart condition. Yeah. But that was all through the hand of the Lord, man. Go ahead. Verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You come into this thing, you come to a crossroads. You could not let it all go. When I first came in, I was married. Me and my wife had a couple rental properties, driving some fancy cars, had a, a three-floor three a three-floor uh, home. So it was all right, you know? Shit, I, was, which I mean, she made all the money, but I was, you know, I was a worker too, though. But it was it, it was life. I was like, wow. And to give that shit up, what's wrong with this nigga? This nigga's crazy. Got a bad, bad chick. Got this, that, and the third. But it was all about the hand of the Lord, man. The power of the Lord, man. That wasn't my luck. I wasn't supposed to be in that place. And I prayed, I prayed every man every night that the Lord take me out of that relationship, man. You know? At first, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I was like, damn, me, myself, I was like, damn, we got bank accounts together. Got property, you know, how, how am I gonna do it? But the Lord put it in place where I had no choice, man. So the Lord set me free, man. And I've been free since, man. All right? So don't think just because you're living in this world that you're somebody special, man. You're nobody. Anybody that proclaims himself to be somebody in this truth, walking around all fly and boasting and bragging about, you know, the shit that they got and the, and the money. And, you know, this dude, remember that dude Polite? He made a video, he made a video of him and his wife in, in Whole Foods. Spending you know a thousand dollars worth of food, a thousand dollars on groceries and food, man. Like that was supposed to be impressive. Ain't nobody was impressed with that shit, man. Ain't nobody was impressed with that. <laughs> See? You know? Yeah, so Luke fourteen eleven. For whoever exalts himself shall be abased. Right. He that hum humble himself shall be exalted. Right. When you come in, you you get humble real quick, man. When you come into the truth, man. The Lord will humble your ass real quick, man. Just when you thought you were somebody. There was once a man in Israel who said he had 95% of the truth before he came into the truth. Oh shit. The scripture's talking about we gotta get we ain't like little babies when we come into this thing. We gotta become a new man when we come into this thing. But needless to say, that individual is no longer to be seen. You know? So you gotta be humble when you come in. The Lord, the Lord will humble you. You know, and then when you then when you are humble. Truly understand that it's the power of the Lord that's in control of all this thing, man. We're just mere servants struggling to get by, man. Struggling, struggling to make it, man. It's a daily struggle, man. It's a fight. It's a fight. It's a struggle. Good. Uh, Galatians six and three. Right. Yeah. Well, if any man take him take himself to be something when he's nothing, he can deceive himself. Right. He deceives himself because you got a lot of fake the funkers out there, man. A lot of fake the funkers, dude. I live next to, anyway, I got a dude I know, he, uh, he got a, you know, he bought the free family, got a little, you know, Mercedes, he got a uh, 4.8 uh, BMW, you know, he go, hey, buddy, I just, hey, 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 buddy, yeah, what's going on, what are you doing over there? I, you know, I work on cars, you know, what are you doing over there, you know, so I'm up, I'd be out there working, he'd be looking at me like, you know, you better do what I do, you know, I've been there, done it, man, Lord took me out of that. Lord took me out of it, so I'm yeah. glad that I'm not doing that shit, man. Because that's that worldly mentality. Yeah. So being a part of this world, as the scripture says, is this place will lead you to your death. It'll destroy you. Go ahead. It's in James 4, we start at verse 8. Yep. Draw not to the most high, and he will draw nigh to you. Right. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. That's right. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be sweated. Turn to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he shall lift you up. And we've all been lifted back up, man. When you come in, the Lord brings you down to the, the Lord and lay you out, man. Lay you right out. But then he builds you up where you should be built up. All right? The spirit of courage. The spirit of understanding and wisdom. The Lord will build you right up. And then you become a man of the Lord out there in the highways of Bible. You know, when you first come out, you kind of question, like, damn, this is the right thing. Am I in the right place? And even still, man, sometimes a demon will jump on you. And man of the Lord, you got to fight all that shit, man. And that goes by means of praying. As it, as it reads in 2 Thessalonians, pray without ceasing, man. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 1. 
my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, right. prepare thy soul for temptation, yep. set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Right, we go we go through these scriptures week in and week out, man. But it's but it's it's imperative that we do so. Because it keeps you in the right frame of mind. Alright? Especially during these times that we're coming in, the season that we're coming in. We're coming into a season where there's a, a natural, a natural born house cleaner, man. Read that line again. It says, uh, set thine heart aright. Set thy heart aright. Get your mind right. Get yourself right, man. Keep focused, man. Keep your mind on the things that are important, man. Because once again, the time of year that we're in is the house cleaning time. If you out there slipping and doing some old bullshit, you going the Lord will reveal it, man. The Lord will reveal it. And all those men who talk shit and come in and talk shit, let's see you know at that time of year. They can't it it can't be stopped. Because it's the spirit of the Lord that makes it happen, man. You 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 can try you can try to to, to, to avert it, but if the Lord don't want you around, he's gonna get you out of there. Go ahead. It says, well, set thy heart, thy heart alright, because it endure, and make not his in time of trouble. Mm -hmm. Cleave unto him and depart not away. That's why it's important to know the names of Yahweh's Yahushua. So you know who you're cleaving to. So you know who you're asking for help from. You've got to know these names, man. Okay? You're going to ask for help. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have to ask in the proper name, man. In the proper fashion. You no, know? you ain't going to go to a bank and, and say, you know, you a drug dealer, Mr. Banker? You know, I want, I want to buy some crack. No. I'm going to ask this bank in the proper terms. You know, hi, sir. Hi, you know, I'm looking to get a loan and, you know, give them the spiel or whatever. You're going to fill all kinds of paperwork. But once again, there's a proper order in which you do things, man. And, and in trusting in the Lord, you got to know his name because there's a proper order. So go ahead. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at the last day. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for that increase at the last day. We're looking, we're looking to be saved. We're looking to earn that one penny, okay? We're looking to be crowned amongst the, amongst the nations. We're looking to rule amongst the nations. We're looking to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shah. okay? These are the things we're looking and hasten for, man. It may seem like we're just a bunch of, a bunch of guys out here on the corner, you know, speaking of, you know, things of the Bible. But we truly believe with our whole heart, man, that this is what the Lord's gonna do for us, man. We truly believe it, you know? And, and there's a lot of men you need to you need to start focusing on the things that are most important, man. You need to start focusing on the things that are most important. Pushing this word and fulfilling the will of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully yep. and be patient when thou change to a low state. Go ahead. For God is trying the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. There's an old saying. An old saying in Babylon, never bite the hand that feeds you, right? Never bite the hand that feeds you. And I say that because right now, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a spirit out there that's moving about where people must, you know, try to put, you know, men that have taught them on front street, man. You know, you know, Saul, King Saul, was out to kill King David, out to kill David. And David never, ever turned his back on Saul, regardless of what the circumstances were. That was integrity. A lot of you men out there got zero integrity, man. Even when Saul, even when Saul was seeking his life, had men chasing him down, King David still wouldn't put forth his hand to touch the man of the of, of Lord's anointed, man. And that's, and that's something you people need to get through your heads, man. Ahead, what you gonna say? Yeah, right, from to other, if that, you know, um, um, as you said, you know, um, King David, he, he, um, King David could have killed Saul at any given moment, but he didn't. Like there was a part where um, uh, Joab was begging from David to, to slaughter him, mm -hmm. and King David said, "No, it's not me, but it's up to the Heavenly Father." That's right. You know, it is the will of the Father, not my will, to, to put him out, man. So King David had the faith that the Lord would take care of everything. Mm -hmm. You know. He, like, like, like the other snare, you know, the, the resolve, man. He, he, he stood by it, man, because you know the Lord was going to protect him in that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the part where um, King Saul was chasing David into a mountain, Saul almost fell off the, fell off the mountain, but David helped him up. Mm -hmm. He didn't even need to. He could have stepped on his finger like, you know, but he didn't. You know, you, you, know, you, know, you know, have to, uh, men, you have to have some integrity, man. You know, there's zero, there's a lot of men with no integrity. It's none. Like I said, 
don't bite the hand that feeds you. Go ahead. Is there more on that? Yeah. Yeah, there's some more on that. Go ahead. Can you give me a second? We don't set on Paul, verse 5, for all these tribes of fire, and accept the obey in the furnace of adversity, mm -hmm. believe in him, and, and he will help thee. Yep. All that will arrive and trust in him. Right. Ye that for the Lord, wait for his mercy. Right, ye yeah. that wait for the Lord's mercy, man. You can't take matters in your own hands. As much as we as much as we hate being here in Babylon, we hate the wickedness that goes upon or, or around this place. We can't take matters in our own hands, man. Wait upon the Lord is gonna be that much more joyous when our when our big brother comes to deliver us from our enemies, man. You ever see a kid and he getting bullied on the yard, his big brother come around the corner? The kid's like, <gasps> you know, he's like, <gasps> right, yeah, man, man. Hey, big brother come around the corner, who's follow, you know? That's the way we're gonna feel when your Howard Shine come back, man. We're gonna be like, yes, we're gonna be praising the Lord and the whole bit, man. But until that time comes, we gotta hold fast, man. We gotta be we gotta hold fast and be strong in his might, man, and believe on him. Alright? There's gonna be all types of trials and tribulations that we're gonna suffer, man. The scriptures say the devil's gonna come down having great wrath, seeking whom he may devour. And the only ones they truly want to devour are the nation of Israel, man. Right. That's who they really want to devour. Going back to that crafty council, they're all in hands, man. They all conspired together. But who wasn't at that table? The nation of Israel wasn't at that table. And it gets, it, it continues to consist. It continues to exist to this very day, man. You are the enemy, Israel. You are the enemy. You think Esau's sitting there playing against the Moabites and in the, in the African age, they, they're, they're planning to get you. Go ahead. He says, uh, believe in him, and he will help thee. All that God will arrive and trust in him. Right. Ye that feel the Lord, wait for his mercy, yep. and go not aside unless he fall. Go not aside unless you fall. Go not aside. Remember the things you've learned and who has taught you. When you go out go outside that, that circle and go off on your own, you're, you're, you're stepping outside of the square, man, the box, man. You're stepping outside of the box. So the Lord is the Lord has his eye on everybody. Everybody and everything. Remember that, man. Remember that. You may think you may be, you know, putting up, you know, information out there, but to come across the men that taught you, you gotta think long and hard about that. The Lord set these men up for a reason, man. Likewise, even down to us, man. The Lord set us all up for a reason. We all have a position in this lot that the Lord has set up, man. Go ahead. This is Job 13 and verse 15. Go ahead. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That's right. But I will maintain, maintain my own ways before him. You see that? Though he slay me, I will trust him. You gotta trust in the Lord no matter what goes down. Right. If you get chastised or you know you do something foul or fucked up and you and men come down upon you. Take it, man. Use that as a stepping stone. Like, I, I know not what to do next time. But once again, the spirit that's going on around here, man, we, we too goddamn close to, for men to be just bullshitting and talking shit, man. We too close in this thing. Right. right? The big pictures may the Lord come back and destroy this place. Right. And may you be found worthy to be delivered from the said destruction. No one wants to die here with Esau, man. Come on, come on. Yo, you got men over, you got a house of Saul, there's a house of David over there. Listen, prophesy about the downfall of this place, man. Prophesy about getting the hell out of here. What about that, man? You don't know, you don't know what house you're from, man. We giving diligence to make our call and election sure by coming out and pushing the word and doing what we're supposed to be doing, man. Come on, boys, you're gonna sit there and say, oh, you're this house and you're that house. Well, we'll see, we'll see. The Lord don't play no games, man. And you come up against the Lord's anointed, you're gonna be dealt with accordingly, man. That's why the scriptures read, and the brothers, one of the brothers made mention of it in Romans, as the 15th chapter, all things were written for our learning. Yeah. Why do you think it's written that King David was so had so much integrity when it came to Saul? Okay? What what are the, what are the situations where there? Um <coughs> Ma, 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 Michael the Archangel in 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 uh in, in, in yeah. Satan. He said he, he said he did, he did not to give a real accusation against. Him. So therefore, here you have men on earth talking shit about the men that that, that taught him and showed him the light through the spirit of the Lord. Now you gonna sit back and talk shit, man? 
Talk shit good. I don't know if I can say too because King David. He didn't touch Saul because he said he was anointed by the Lord. That's right. So likewise with the elders. Right. right. Them, them, them being anointed by the Lord. That's right. You can't come up against them. And, you know, it wasn't David that killed Saul. It was right. um, the Lord that took Saul how about, out. So if they're going off, the Lord will handle that. Right. Yeah. How, about, how about the servant that came from the from the battle? And he said, uh, well, no, 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 no. Um, he said that uh, uh, Saul fall on the sword. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he said, you know, he said he was he was he was fleeing. They was they were, they were chasing him hot from the battle. Oh, yeah. He seen him. He's like, yeah. He said he thrust him through. Yeah. And King David said, how dare you put forth your hand against one of the Lord's anointed? Yeah, right. Even though Saul asked him to put him to death, you know what I'm saying? But he but just just think of the, look at the dynamics of how that went down, man. That's right. yeah. How much more for the men that the Lord set up, man? Where would we be without the head apostle, right? Where would we be? The Lord set him up, man. Right. Think about it. And the, and, the, and, the, and the elders and everybody, man. So just humble down, man. Go ahead. Uh, Jude 1, verse 7, verse 7, verse 8. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despite dominion, mm -hmm. and speak evil or dignities. Right. Yet Michael, and the archangel, when contending with the devil, is disputed about the body of Moses, right. who does not break against some sharp does not bring against him already a position, right. but said the Lord with you. Oh, that's right. See that? So these things, the things that we're reading, the things that we're, we're understanding, man, you got to live this, man. You got to live it and understand it. It's not just something you read and just regurgitate and go out and go watch your life. You got to live it. You got to put it into practice. You got to put it into play, as they say. All right? But we being of the whole for the elect, well, when do we get delivered out of here, man? When we get that crown. Got men who've been. Give me that second chapter. Yep. Started. Uh. Verse. Uh. Hold on. Thirty-nine. Yeah. Hold on. Started thirty. Started thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Yeah. Gotcha. So verse thirty-seven. Yep. He says, "Oh, this is Second Ezra two and thirty-seven. Oh, receive the gift that is given you." And be glad, giving thanks unto him that have led you to the heavenly kingdom. That's right. Now, now check it out, man. When we came into this thing, we were all just, you know, niggas walking around aimlessly, doing whatever we wanted to do, right? And the Lord has delivered unto us the most precious thing on the planet Earth, this word. Delivered it unto us. And not only did he deliver it unto us, he entrusted us with it. So now we go out and the scriptures speak about what? Curse be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. The Lord put his trust in you as a servant to go out and do the work the correct way, man. How much more is that? Yeah, how much more of a blessing is that? Looking around the world, all these people that are out on the highways and byways throughout the four corners of the earth, here we are. The Lord has, has, has reigned upon us and gave us the spirit of understanding. That's, I mean, that's something that you can't even, that you can't, in this world, you can't even find words to thank the Lord, man. That's right. For deliverance unto you. Think about it. All the millions and millions of Israelites on the planet, he chose us. Yeah. So come on now. Go ahead. Read on. He says in verse 38, Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. The number of those that be sealed. We're trying to get that seal, man. We're trying to get that, that mark that was set upon us. Okay? And that mark being the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of Yahweh Bash Go ahead which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garment of the Lord. Right, now coming out of coming out on the highways and byways, you know, Brother read earlier, they think it's strange that you to run not with them. Because we've, been, we've come out of this world, man. We've come out of the world, we've come out of the things that we're so accustomed to doing. And now we come to serve the Lord. Now we give our life to the Lord. Now we've become warriors and soldiers for the Lord. Defending the gospel at all costs. Right. Putting putting our lives on the front lines, man. Being those servants that the Lord has set up. Go ahead. He said in verse 40, Take thy number, O Zion, and shut, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in light, mm -hmm. which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. Go ahead. The number of thy children whom thou not longest for is fulfilled. That's right. The longest for, longest for fulfilled. is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hollow. Yo, listen, man. You, 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 
when you come into this faith, right? Go through a, you go through a, a, a self-examination, if you will. You go through a self-examination, and sometimes you question yourself, like, damn, damn, why me? Why do you give it to me? You know, am I worthy? You start thinking about all the shit that you've done in the past and the shit you've done while you was in the world, and it kind of fucking fucks you a little bit. But know of a certain, your Lord don't make any goddamn mistakes, man. Your Lord don't make mistakes. You've been ordained from the womb, all right? Now, if men have come in and, and did not, you know, stand the test of what the Lord's program was, then that was his luck. That was luck. The Lord came in, he endured for a little while, but then the Lord had to get rid of him. You know, if people look at, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going against them, they kicked me out. I'm, no, the, they, the Lord got to rid of you, man. It's all by the hand of the Lord. Trust me, we've been on, we've been on, we've been in a situation, man. And it's, it's an awful feeling, man. To know that your heart is sincere, but sometimes the slip of the tongue can get you in a world of shit, man. Go ahead. It says in verse 42, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. Right. He saw a great people that he could not know. Right? This would be known as the hope for the elect. This is that great people that Ezra saw. Now, men consist and continually consist saying that certain men of this house and certain men of that house, do you truly know? Do you truly know and understand what the Lord's program is, what he's got going on? The Lord will do something for a reason, man. Like, like the elder had mentioned the rape doctrine earlier. That, to me, was a sifting period. A lot of people may not understand it, but I believe that was a sifting period. You know how many people turned their back when that whole thing came out, that rape doctrine thing came out? Oh, them niggas rape them, they're crazy. They're rape them. A lot of people fell off, man. A lot of people fell off. Just like I also believe, this is me personally, that 2000 prophecy was also about the, 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 the destruction in the end. I believe that was also another a weeding out or sifting period. A lot of men fell off on that period. Can you imagine if them men didn't fall off? Would be that, that, that second door opened up for that second wave of brothers to come through whom the Lord was seeking for, man. You know, we, when I came in, when we came in, I was like, yeah, I want to be destroyed. I want to be destroyed. I, I want to be destroyed like the next day. You know, when I sat, I was reading one day and I started and I thought, and I'm reading certain things, I'm like, damn, this, this, this still got to be a lot of people that's going to be woken up to this thing, man. You know? And, and my spirit kind of took a, my spirit took a, a, a turn for, for patience. That's the perfect word. My spirit took a turn for patience because I knew as through the readings, I knew that other things had to take place. Other men had to, had to come through the, through, the, through, the, through the gate, if you will. You know, look at all you brothers here now, man. Look at all you brothers here now. If, if, if my prayers were answered when I wanted America to be destroyed, where would y'all brothers be? The Lord said, all right, I'm going to rent you, I'm going to destroy this whole place. But it wasn't my will, it was Yahweh Shai's will. But in the midst of his will being done, I had to show patience, man. I had to show patience. You know, the scripture say, woe unto him that is love patience. So this thing is about patience, man. And people that come in, they don't, they don't see any, they don't see, um, they don't see any, uh, uh, what am I looking for? Any results right away? Ah, I'm out of here. You got to say this place is going to be destroyed. I'm out of here. You know? You know? Go ahead, brother. Chapter 12, verse 42. And the Lord said, When then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, mm -hmm. to give them their portion of meat in due season? That's right. To give them their portion of meat in due season. So the scriptures speak about uh, an appointed time, man. There's always an appointed time. There's always an appointed time for everything. All right? Go ahead. Second Peter 3 and 3. Knowing this verse that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own blood. Right, the scoffers, the scoffers hear us prophesying, right? And they, oh, when is it going to happen? Oh, when is it going to happen? Now, the scoffers heard us bring out uh, Amos 9 and 8 15 years ago. We bring it out today. Oh, Y'all said that 15 years ago. Because that's a scoffer's mind. A scoffer's just want to see that what we're saying, if it doesn't happen, you're a false prophet. Because it, it, it involves patience. No, 
when he was on the scene. Prophesied for over 100 years, right? And you best, you better bet your bottom dollar, as Daddy Wood wants to say, that Noah probably had all types of niggas coming up talking big shit. You know, this, this man building a goddamn big ass boat and ain't no water for miles away. What's this guy doing? And they looked at him strange. Likewise, they look at us the same way when we're on the highways and byways with our garments on. Yep. We're talking about the Lord's coming back and he's going to destroy this place with thermonuclear missiles and he's coming back with chariots. How far out does that sound to, to the untrained end, man? Yep. They're like, oh, spaceships? The Lord's coming with spaceships? <laughs> because they never heard these things in the churches. Because the churches aren't preaching these things. Because the churches aren't men of the Lord. They're not servants of the Lord. You got something? Yes. All right, let, 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 okay. let me get up. Verse 4, saying, where is the promise of his coming? Yep. But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That's right. Go ahead. This is Matthew 16. It says, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempted desire him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, he say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. Mm -hmm. And in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, right. but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. Right. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, mm -hmm. and there shall no sign be given unto it mm -hmm. but the sign of the prophet Jonah. That's right. That's right. So when the, when the Lord leaps out of the heavens, man, and stops to destroy this place, he ain't gonna give no, he ain't gonna give you no goddamn you know, come to you tonight, you know, I'm come tomorrow, be ready. You know, I'm gonna send somebody. Now the Lord's gonna come and sm start smashing shit, man. You least expect it. Go ahead. Uh, second Ezra chapter five, verse 43. So I answered and said, couldn't thou not make those, this is going to what you were saying earlier, but you want to come in, mm -hmm. the other brothers coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, second Ezra chapter five, verse 43. So I answered and said, couldn't uh, thou not make those that have been made and be now that are for to come at once, that thou mightest show thy judgment the sooner. Then answered he me and said, the creature may not haste above the maker. Neither may the world hold them at once that shall be credit therein. And I said, as thou hast said unto thy servant, that thou wouldst give life unto all, hast given life at once to the creature that thou hast created, and the creature bear it. Even so might now all bear them that now are present at once. And he said unto me, Ask the womb of a woman, and say unto her, If thou bringest <laughs> forth children, why dost thou not all to, uh, together, but one after another? Pray her therefore, and bring forth ten children at once. <laughs> and I said, She cannot, uh, but must do it by distance of time. That's right. Then said he unto me, even so have I given the womb of the earth to those that be sown in their times. Right. So everything has an appointed time, man. Yeah. The, 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 you can't hasten, the servant can't hasten above the maker, man. The Lord, the Heavenly Father and the Son, they, they have all things in control. Shit, even your whole shot on the right hand side. He's patient. He's being patient. He's showing patience. Waiting for the Heavenly Father to give the green light. And likewise, we are doing the same thing. We, we hasten in the day where we want this bitch to get destroyed. Tomorrow, we want it. But we know it's, it's, it's not our time, it's the Heavenly Father's time. It's no, uh, it's, it may have to read again. Second Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest parts of the sign pass, right. which I've told thee before, mm -hmm. then shalt thou understand that it's the very same time where in the highest we get to visit the world which he made. Right, and that's, and that's, the, and that's, the, that's, the, that's the key point, man. The Lord is beginning to visit the world in which he made. Right. You know, and people aren't putting these pieces of this puzzle together. People are just saying, oh yeah, the, the weather, you know, in California, all of a sudden they're getting, you know, winter blast storms up there. Right. You know, oh, down and down in Texas, they're getting all kinds of snow and cold weather. You know, this isn't no coincidence, man. The Lord is really starting to stretch his hand out. And to those who don't know it and don't believe, you're going to be in for a rude awakening, man. You know, all these news people all around the world, you know, this is biblical proportions. Why are they making those kind of phrases? Why are they making, oh, this is biblical proportions. Or oh, they'll, they'll, they'll say something to the effect of, uh, you know, 
this is this is unheard of. We've never seen these type of things happen. Because you have the end of times. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. What, what? They always end it with a left. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yeah, end of time. Yeah, you know? Maybe a whole atheist. Right, right. <laughs> end times or right. a biblical proportions. Right. You know? But once again, man, because believe it or not, the spirit is looming through all. The spirit is looming through all people, man. Say the spirit of all flesh. flesh. That's right. People are saying things. They're like, "Why did I say that?" Yeah. Because it's the, it's a spiritual thing. Go ahead. You know, I'm going to say even the signs of the prophet being on the highways and the violence. Yep. Uh, Malachi four says what? That he's going to send Elijah the prophets. That's right. To, 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 to the hearts of the fathers to the sons of the sons. Right. You know what I mean? To the fathers. Yep. Hey, I, I was going to say real quick. Even when you look at our. Um, Esau's calculation of time, the doomsday clock. Right. Notice they call it that, and they right. tell you that they're a couple of seconds away right. from right. from the doomsday. But uh, I have a comment from the comment board right here. Right. This is the book of Habakkuk 2 and 3. Yep. It says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Right. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And waiting for it is a key part of what? Patience. A key part of patience. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come, man. So, you know, being young in the truth back then, I was like, oh, I want to be destroyed now. I want to be destroyed now. Now, now I got patience. You know the old saying, the two, two, two bulls up on the hill? The little bull says to his father, Daddy, let's run down and fuck one of them cows. He says, no, son, let's run down and bang them all. Patience, man. I heard that from the white boy. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Walk, walk down? Yeah. I say walk down, I say run down. Yeah. Hey, either or just get down there and get a ball, right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my man, 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 we laughed too much, man. We laughed too much last week, man. That's, yeah, but yeah, but you know, but you get the message, man. It's all about that patience, man. I got a quote. Yeah. 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 Somebody in Texas, sir. Yeah, good. Uh, I got a quote. It's, um, it's from uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. And, and it reads, uh, about the times of the end, a body of men will be raised up. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Can you, does it have the date he was oh, born? Yeah. The years? Yeah. Read that first. All right. uh, 1642 to 1747. We weren't on the highways and byways in 1747 when that man died. We weren't on the highways and byways in 1642. But this is what came to that man. This is, that, this is what came to this man through the spirit. Like we was just get to talking about how people say things and they don't know why they're saying, but they're saying them through the spirit. All right. And once again, we brought this up before. Brother, read it again. Read it slow and yep. concise. All right. So, sir, I have a quote from Sir Isaac Newton, 1642 to 1747, about the times of the end. A body of men will be raised up who will turn their attention to the prophecies and assist upon their literal interpretation in the midst of much clamor and opposition. You see that? Yeah. And this is, who, who, who is experiencing that right now? Who, what men are experiencing that? Joel Olstein's not experiencing that. T.D. Jakes ain't experiencing that. T.D. Jakes ain't on the highways and byways in the midst of, in the midst of much people and clamor. Who's that, who's that referring to? Yours, yours truly, man, from the head of apostles on down. We're the ones that are on the highways and byways talking about these interpretations of the scriptures. Go ahead. Ezekiel 37 and 15. Right. She says, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. Right, God. You see that? So again, that's another step that we had to take, according to the scriptures, to what? To let our people know. All right. So during the time, during the time, I'm gonna go this way here. During the time of the the old covenant, right? The the teachings of the Lord were through word of mouth. You had to tell your children, your sons. You had to tell your son's sons, and they had to tell their sons about who the Lord was and what the Lord's name was. And we still have to do that to this very day. We still have to do that to this very day. If I have a son, he's born, and when he comes out, he's not going to have the word of the Lord instilled in him because the Lord hasn't set that time yet. But when he comes out, i got to teach him 
son, this is the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Likewise with the sign on the on, on the highways and byways. People are gonna come up, Jake ain't just gonna come up and be like, oh, I'm an Israelite. If they don't know, why? How do they know? Because they gotta be teachers. We still have to teach these things to the people. When the Lord sets it up where we're not gonna be teaching anymore, it's gonna be in our inward parts, that's when it's gonna put it and instill it in our inward parts where we're not gonna to have to go out and tell everybody. People going, Israel's going to know at the time, man. Israel is going to know. We're going to teach the other nations, all right? Because why? They're outside of the sanctuary. They're outside of the covenants, all right? But the children of Israel, whom the covenants belong to. Go ahead. This is uh, Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said mm -hmm. the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds yep. and write them in their hearts, yep. and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. That's right. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and everyone, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, right. for all shall know me <laughs> from the least to the greatest. Right. So when that time comes, when that new covenant is fully set in place, we're not going to have to teach everybody. We're not going to have to teach people what the name of the Lord is. Right now, we have to te tell and teach people what the name of the Lord is. Hence, when we got the sign, they're going to come up, they're going to see the sign. Will you not show us what thou means by these? And we're going to tell them, this is who you are as a people. You serve our power. Who is the power? His name is Yahweh. You see? Now, when you jump back to, when you jump down to um, uh, Jeremiah 31, jump to that. Because the Apostle Paul is just reiterating what, what Jeremiah has said, right? So, why would the Apostle Paul have to reiterate? So, he's telling the story. Paul's telling the story. He's saying, listen, there's going to come a day when the Lord's going to set again another covenant. Because at that time, he was he was talking to this, what, the Hebrews. In 8, he was talking to the Hebrews. Read, read out Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31 and verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a, a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not Yo, Elder, she's looking for you, Elder. She's looking for me? Yeah, she said Elder I Moss or something she said. Verse 32 says, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, right. which my covenant they break, right. although I was a husband unto them, says right. the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. This shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, saith the Lord. Go ahead. I will put my laws in their inward parts. I will put my laws in their inward parts. Go ahead. And write it in their hearts. Go ahead. And will be their power. Yep. And they shall be my people. Right. So when that ha when that time comes, when you have children, there's going to be no need for you to teach your children what the what the name of the Lord is. Because it's going to be in the inward parts. Go ahead. It says, and they shall teach no more every every man his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, but they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. Again, and they will teach no more their neighbor. So we're not going to have to go out and teach people. When the Lord puts in that second covenant, that, that second covenant fully, we're gonna we're not gonna have to go out and teach these things right now. We gotta teach. The Lord sent teachers on the highways and byways, right, to tell the nations who the Lord, who the Lord is, what His name is, what His Son's name is, what is what is what is a, what the agenda is, if you will, right? What the scriptures mean. All this is gonna be in our inward parts, man. But again, coming out on the highways and byways, how would they know except there be a teacher? We're going to be teaching, man, until the Lord sets us up back in the kingdom, where our bodies are changed, our mindset, we get the laws in our inward parts. Until that takes place, man, we got to teach, man. We ain't going to sit back and lay back and just chill and expect Israelites to walk by and see the sign like, oh, man, Israel, oh, they go, Shalom, brother. You know, how are they going to know about Shalom if you don't tell them, if you don't teach them? You know? Go ahead. Isaiah, I'll tell you this morning. And though the Lord gave you the bread of adversity yep. and the water of affliction, yep. yet shall not thy teachers be removed from a call unto a call anymore. That's right. Not but, that, yet not the teachers shall be removed from a call anymore. So once again, a teacher does what? He teaches. He tells you about the things that are written. That's what a teacher does. Going back to the ancient times when the law was given, the law was passed down how? 
by word of mouth. From son, from father to son, from father to son, from father to son. But the scripture says, when the Lord sets that new covenant up, there's not going to be any need for us to teach people. Go ahead. Yes, shall not thy teachers be moved into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teacher in thy ear. In thy ears shall hear a, a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right end, or when ye turn to the left. Their eyes, their eyes shall see their teachers, man. You know? And the, the brother was just talking, I'm thinking about it, man. It, it, I mean, we, we, we truly, now the Apostle Gabal made mention, we are in captivity, man. We are, we are in captivity. We ain't, we ain't free. You know? Now, now the brother had made a comment earlier, right? About about his car. He gave an example. Give you an example, brother. Um, I purchased a car and you know I went to go get the car tuned up and fixed up or whatever. And um, you know, I got warranty on it, but what happens is once you purchase a car, there's a time or a date that the warranty goes in effect. Right. And you can liken that unto the, the process of the new covenant. That's right. It's gonna it's gonna go into effect. Right, even though it was written down and, 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 and spoken to us, we read about it, but it's going to go into effect at a certain point in time. You know, the testator wrote it down, put it together, and we're going to receive it when they're at the appropriate time. Man. But right now, y'all hear that? But um but all that being said, man, so you know we out here pushing, man. We out here pushing. We're gonna continue to teach. We're gonna continue to tell the name of the Lord, even to all those who come up and and for those who just are inherent in the air shots to hear it, man. They ain't gonna these people, these Israelites out here. We don't know they're Israelites, all right? They're not going to just all of a sudden, because we're, we're, it's, if it's the new covenant, they should already they should know it. They should have it. They should have it written in the input parts. Any child, any child that's born of a man of the Lord, when the Lord, according to what they say now, we're in the new covenant. When that child is brought forward, he should have all that stuff installed in his input parts. That sounds. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. According to what the scripture says, that's right. Uh, Hebrews 9 verse 16. You got any scholars on there? Go ahead. <laughs> Hebrews 9 verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also a necessity be the death of the testator. That's right. For a testament is of force after men are dead. That's right. Otherwise, it is of no strength right. at all while the testator lives. Mm -hmm. so, so the Lord, when he put together the, the plans, if you will, all right, these plans were meant for us. But when he fully implements it and gets back into, get us back into order, then we're going to receive these things. Right now, we ain't receiving it, man. We we ain't kicked. We in captivity. We going through hell. The children are going through hell. Everything is fucked up. We're suffering. We are eating sour food, drinking piss poor water, breathing terrible air. This ain't fun over here, man. The scriptures tell you this place is polluted. It will destroy you with a sword destruction. This is what's going on over here. But we as men of the Lord, Lord willing, he continues to keep us in, in, in fighting shape, man. That we can withstand the wiles of the devil. And that's what we need, man. We need the power of Yahweh, Bosh, Yahweh, Shai to give us the power and the strength to withstand these devils and everything they got conjured up for this, for this country, man. They're really about to unload and unleash and come down with that great wrath. Man. You, think, you think the Lord is killing? Kidding? You think the Lord is kidding that he, he said Esau's gonna have great wrath? These devils gonna have great wrath? You guys, you guys, you guys are fooling around with this thing and joking with this thing. Alright? It's not gonna be funny when it's a matter of life and death. It's not gonna be funny when you step outside and you see somebody laying in your damn driveway with a goddamn a bullet hole in their head. It's not gonna be funny then. Then everybody's going to turn their attention to the prophets. Then they're going to want to turn their attention to the men of the Lord. I can guarantee you that, man. That's why you got to keep your keep your mind right, man. Keep your mind right. Go ahead, brother. Uh, First Thessalonians uh, 5, and I started at the top, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Right. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Yep. 
For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them yep. as travail upon, upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you, overtake you as a thief. But listen, listen, the Lord told us to go out there and give these people warning, right? So what? So that day does not overtake you as a thief, man. If you are if you have been warned, you're going to you're going to do what it takes to avoid the fucking to, to avoid the disaster, man. If you're driving down the road and somebody stops you and says, hey, there was a there was a sinkhole up there. There's a sinkhole that's gonna swallow up your car if you keep going down there. You've been warned. Now if you just you say this, hey, thanks for the information, you keep on driving down and you go in that sinkhole, that's on you, man. Yeah. But you have been warned while you're sitting in that sinkhole talking about why'd I do this? Alright? So likewise, when we come out on the highways and byways, we're warning you people about the destruction that's coming, about the wrath that's coming, about how the enemy is gonna raise up and kill as many as he desires, man. We're warning you about these things. <clears throat> if you choose to take heed, not to not take heed of the warning, that's on you. Mm. But don't think it's strange and surprised, don't be surprised when you find yourself walking to a goddamn guillotine in your outfit and they got you all hemmed up and they talking about, yeah, we're gonna take your head off today. And you don't have to be a man of the Lord. You don't have to be on the highways and byways teaching. Shit, you ain't even gotta be a prophet. You ain't gotta be teaching anything. If you're an Israelite, these are the things that's coming for you, man. These are the things that's coming for you. So the purpose is what? And why tell us? Because if you have, if you can, come back and identify yourself and identify that the Lord is your power, maybe you will have that protection, man. Maybe he, you will be defended. Because there's hope. Maybe you will have that defense, man. But a lot of you people, if the Lord don't have mercy upon you, you aren't going to have that protection, man. Alright? Go ahead. Finish off on that. First uh, Thessalonians 5 verse uh, 5. Ye are all the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. That's right. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Right. We are we are not sleeping, man. This thing has consumed us to the point where we go to bed, stare at the ceiling, thinking about the scriptures. Wake up, wake up, go, you know, shower up, thinking about the scriptures. Go to work, see things, hear things, thinking about the scriptures. Go to work, come home from work, thinking about the scriptures. Go pick up the kids, you're thinking about the scriptures. This has consumed us, man. So therefore, there's no other outlet but for us to what? To commune, what? In holy conversation about these scriptures, man. That's it. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I'll read again, verse six. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, yep. but let us watch and be sober. Right. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. Right. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. That's right. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a for helmet, the hope of salvation. The hope of salvation, okay? We, we hope and pray that the Lord Yahweh watch me all shy, watch over it and protect us, man. Because honestly, man, in this kingdom, we don't have might. We have zero might to combat the enemy, man. And that's why the Lord said, wait ye upon me. Well, we we gonna wait on the Lord, man. We are gonna take action. We got Israelites wanting to take action right now. Let's get the let's get all the Israelite families together, all the camp together, and, and go down and do and then do what? What what what, what, is, what is the solution for all the Israelite camps getting together? We are gonna stand around and stare at each other. Okay, now what do we do? What do we do now? Because all Esau gotta do is come with one fucking Humvee with a 50 caliber on the back of his shit, and it's over. Game over. You think the Lord's gonna send the angel down and you know jump in front of the, the bullets? No, that's gonna be it, man. Because the Lord said, "Wait, you upon me." You got them jakes that went over to Israel, who were over there all sad and boo hooing. We mentioned this last week. They're sad and boo hooing because they can't understand why the city of David is this way, and, 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 and another location is that way. They're all confused. It just doesn't make any sense. They're all confused. Well, you shouldn't have brought your ass over there. And now he's all talking about, yeah, you got to leave the country. You got to get out of here. But well, wait a minute. Why does everybody else get to go over there on airplanes and receive with open arms? But you, Jake, has got to get the hell out of Dodge, man. That just goes to show you, you are the Lord's people, and your black ass don't belong over there right now. Bottom line. Yeah, just to go with uh, what you're saying, the prophecy... Uh, Isaiah 14 verse 1 For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob And will yet choose Israel And set them in their own land Who's going to set them in their own land? 
Lord. It wasn't. It wasn't upon you and your your decision makers to say, let's go and, and get to uh, Israel. We're going to set up shop. We're going to go see, or you know, Mr. Kosher Man and have him. It's all. It's it's all wrong, man. It's all wrong. And why would you want to go back over there while them devils are in in the kingdom anyway, ruling? You know. You know right from wrong, right? At this point, you're going to go over there and devil gum. Shalom, brother. Shalom. We on two different pages, man. Can two walk together except they be agreed? You know? So they're going right. You gotta have a fight going to wailing war. You know? That don't make no sense, man. The wailing war. Totally, totally contrary to scripture, man. You know, everything over there is contrary. And if you gotta make a pact with these devils while you over there, totally off, man. Totally off. Yeah. Yeah. You still gonna have to go to the enemy for one of all. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Sin City. Uh, that's Sin City. They over there. Yeah. They over there. The dudes are over there, all complaining about how they couldn't, you know, worship the way they truly wanted to worship. Why? Because that's not your man. Yeah. They on that toxic man over there. Yeah. Waste, waste part. Yeah. The moment, right? Yeah. yeah. But again, as the, as the servants, as servants of Yahweh Bashmi Shah, we've come to warn you about these things. Don't think you're going to get up and Because there's going to be some trouble Some times coming Don't think you're going to get up And go to the Holy Land And be closer to the Lord The Lord's going to finish that place off man Toxic You got to cleanse that bitch over there Toxic land wasn't a part of the new covenant that, That's right That's right That wasn't in, that wasn't in the agreement It right. wasn't a part of the deal Right you got, you, got, you got families over there Who had kids over there Who know nothing but that land Now they got to go back home Now they got to come back to the States man I don't know what we're gonna do. You should have stayed your ass right in America, man. To serve your, to serve your true slavery over there. Right. No bad, bro. I'm about to say, and if, and if they knew the scriptures, part of Israel gonna be destroyed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like they, that's why the um, the service that's gonna be under us gonna be building up our land again. Yeah. Well, so. well, once again, you always got some rebels in the, in, in the nation of Israel who gonna do what the hell they want to do, not do what the Lord wants to do. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna say a couple more scripts. We're gonna wrap this up. And, you know, we got some tells y'all. Look, you got some. We're gonna wrap it up. It's getting kind of brisk out here. Oh, uh, First Timothy uh, four verse sixteen. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hate and them that hate thee. Right. That's why the scripture says two are better than one. For if one falls, the other is there to help him up, man. And you gotta have sometimes you gotta have the voice of reasoning from your brother. If you if you're thinking about something, you know, you go you seek counsel, you get you know, you get your advice, and, and the brother can set you straight, man. And if that and if they and if two can't agree, you go get a third brother, you know? But once again, you, you gotta do things in order, man. You can't just get hasty and decide you're gonna do something and then regret what you did. You know, trust me, we've been down there in our path. Alright? And let me get a couple comment boys, brother. All right, I was reading some off. Um, the main one doesn't have any. Um, you check this one real quick, Elder. All right, um, this is the book of Baruch 2 and 32. Well, I'm going to start at 2 and 31. Yep. It says, um, And shall know that I am the Lord their power, for I will give them an heir and ears to hear. Right. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and right. think upon my name. That's key. They shall praise me in the land of their captivity. You ain't going over to Israel to praise the Lord. That's not the land of your captivity. You was brought over here to America, to the shores of America, in the islands of the sea, to, to serve captivity. That and there is where you were going to learn the name of the Lord, in that captivity. Okay? And by going back to, to, uh, to the land of Israel, that's going contrary to what the Lord said. He said they're going to praise me in the land of the captivity, man. Go ahead. Come on, Elder. And it says, um, it says, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name right. and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the ways of their fathers which sin before the Lord. Yep. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yep. And they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them and they shall not be diminished. Right. He said, he said, you shall be lords over that land. You're going to be lords over there. So if you're over in that land right now, you should be a lord. 
You should have all these nations bowing down to you, coming in and giving you your goods and serving you and asking you what they can do for you. Is that right? But instead, but instead, you go over there, damn near, you know, about to get run out of there, people looking at you like you're like you're scum of the earth, laughing at you. People on the news, they got the, the black Hebrew Israelites, ha ha ha, laughing at shit. But that time's gonna come when the Lord says to so we're gonna go over there, we're gonna straighten shit out, man. We, right, and there's more going on over there. They said when we go back to the land, the Lord said we're gonna be no more war. And he gonna dwell among wait a minute. The Lord said he gonna dwell amongst us. If you over there, you the Hebrew Israelites, well where's the Lord at? Where's, where's David? Where's everybody? Where's, where's the rest of the brethren at? You know? So good. Karn, it goes on to say, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them yep. to be their power, and they shall be my people, yep. and I will no more drive my people of Yasharala out of the land that I have given them. Everlasting covenant with them when he brings us back over there, and we're gonna be his people. He's going to be our power, and that's going to be that, man. We're going to be in rulership. We're going to be in total rulership. We're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, which is also very important. All right? Here you are, Israelites, over there in the land where, where you were told not to, that you, where you were told you would not see it again. You go back over there, and you're, you're, you're ruining, and I speak loosely with this, but you're, 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 you're taking away from the... The, the essence of what the Lord has set up, man, by going over there before Him. Right. You know, this ain't the spies where we're gonna send the spies out forward to go survey the land so we can come and take it over. No, that whole place gotta be burnt up, man. That shit gotta be caught on fire over there, man. Why would you wanna be over there anyway? Amongst, amongst, amongst all the wicked. Alright? Alright, so anybody got anything else? Alright, so Lord willing, our brothers and sisters are edified. We're going to come out, continue to come out and do the work of the Lord as, as we've been commanded to do on the highways and byways until the Lord comes and delivers us out of here. And with that, we give all praise to Yahweh, the bars and head of the great millstone that rule well. And shall want to all you brethren on the highways and byways, continually fighting that good fight of faith. Lord willing, we're following that number to be delivered. But until then, we're going to continue to fight that fight. We're gonna say ba 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 ba